Hello, how you guys doing? And welcome to another episode of Hot Knife's House. Thank you if you've tuned in, if you've tuned in for the first time. Just to let you know what I normally do here is deconstruct some of my old compositions, songs that I've written uh, with view to giving you a few hints along the way and things that you can use in your own productions. But tonight is different because tonight we are going to be talking about getting your music out there. Now, what do I mean by getting your music out there? Well, really just getting your music heard by the people, getting your music from the studio out to everyone else for whatever purpose that may be. And we're going to talk about lots of different angles as well. It doesn't necessarily just need to be dance music. Obviously, I'm doing Hot Knife at the moment. The Hot Knife is very much a, a, see, a kind of disco house type project, not limited to, but um, yeah, in the past, I've worked in like heavy rock. I've worked in uh, traditional Scottish music. I've, I've done reggae and uh, all of these different things. Yeah, and many other styles as well, by the way. But yeah, but all of these things, ultimately, um, you know, there's a lot of the same things apply in how to get your music out there. And nowadays, when there's less and less record deals on the table and well since mp3s come out really the record industry has been in steady decline so yeah in one way it's caused a lot of problems for the industry but in another way it's made it much easier for people to get your material out there which is another way of looking at it you know so your actual motivations and uh, what you're looking for from the industry obviously will affect you know what you'll get out of this and what we're about to tell you but i have broken this up into a few different areas here now, by the way, oh, there we go, expectations, okay, just before I start this, actually, I'm going over to the chat here, if anyone's joined us, I'm just going to say hello on the chat, feel free to say hello, if you are tuned in on Twitch TV, uh, then you get a Twitch account and you can chat away to us and you can ultimately uh, ask any questions that you have on everything we're talking about here, so I've broken this all down into uh, chapters, if you like, now, first chapter is going to be expectations. Now, this is something, obviously, self-explanatory. What are you looking for from your music? What are you looking for from the industry, even? Uh, now, going on from that, now I've programmed in a big whooshing noise here, which I'm dead happy about, so I'm going to play you that. Yeah, so like I say, I've broken these all up into chapters. First one, expectations. That is going to be, like I say, what are you looking for? And this is just a bit of switch here. Watch this. This will be worth it. Programmed this in myself, you know. <laughs> Motivation. There we go. Yeah. Motivation, another self-explanatory one, but it's definitely worth talking about because it's something that uh, is really going to make everything work or not, for that matter. Right, okay. We also have the product itself. Yes, the all-important product. Really, what everything hinges on. Uh, after that, getting it online. How do you physically get your, or mechanically, if you like, get your stuff online and available to the public? Or do you send it to a record company, etc.? Now, marketing, this is a big thing as well. Thinking about what your actual market is. We'll talk a bit about that because not many people even really know what market they sit in. And I think that's always dangerous. But anyway. Getting it out there, yeah, they're all important. How do we make contacts? How do we um, ultimately get in touch with people uh, who are of important and who are going to be able to do something with your music, hopefully. So, let's see it over to the chat here. Who do we have, Knox556? Hello. Hello again, mate. Thanks for tuning in. Like I say, you can ask questions away throughout the whole thing. Right, so... To the very first thing here, now, I put up in big letters on the screen because you can't really, you can't uh, downplay it, to be honest. All of these things are very important. Expectations, like I say, what do you want from the music industry? What do you want from your music? Now, I'm going to do some other talks where we talk about um, songwriting, maybe some stuff about, obviously, we're going to continue with the production ones as well, but I'm going to do from time to time different kind of industry info Q&As, and this is going to be the first one, okay? But like I say, expectations we're talking about here. What do you want from your music? 
Well, first thing I'd say, if it's for gigs, then really it's something that you would need to contact promoters about. Getting a good quality demo, get on Google, see who's available, etc. That's not really what we're talking about tonight. Tonight, we are talking mostly about how you get recorded material out and released and hopefully get some recognition for doing that. We could talk about uh, gigs. Also, the songwriting aspect as well. I will do that in another talk. But like I say, um, is it for gigs? Is it for personal enjoyment? If you're doing music for a personal enjoyment, then who's to say what you need to do with it other than make yourself happy with it? And like I say, if it's for getting gigs, speak to promoters, go around local pubs, stuff like that. But what I'm really talking about is people who are serious about getting original material out. You know, the kind of people that would uh, probably be looking for world domination in their wildest dreams, even though they don't admit it, you know. But there are parameters by which you can have the best chance of getting your material out there. Now, expectations-wise, this is quite a sad story, but I really need to kind of start with this to, so you can understand exactly what the music industry, certainly from my perspective and everyone around me, has been like. When I studied music, I, I went to music college uh, when I was about uh, 17, I believe, went for two years. Now, in that college, there must have been a... I would say at least a good 200 or so people all doing my course, which is music, performance and promotion. You know, fast forward about 20 years, I'm 37 now. I know um, of, I think, two other people who still work in the music industry and two other people who really worked in the music industry at all after college. You know, the odds of actually been able to get involved and to, you know, to make money from your own music, it gets slimmer and slimmer all the time. People who ultimately make their own music also do other jobs as well. I find maybe they play in wedding bands and stuff. And this isn't, I'm not just talking about uh, small bands. Anyone, you know, some of your charting acts also have jobs in pubs and stuff like that because this is the problem with the music industry. You, you know, there's no money around anymore since MP3s come out. It really destroyed it. So you need to be doing music, I believe, for your uh, for your personal enjoyment first okay that's the main thing yeah we all want to kind of make it we all want to be you know have a <laughs> platinum selling album and whatnot but the odds of that happening i mean i personally know um through two degrees of separation as in someone who knows someone i know more people have won the lottery than have made it in the music industry with their own material and i work professionally as a, a studio engineer here in my studio the hq glasgow and, I, and i've been around the music scene for the last 20 years in various forms and like i say in some cases i've been you know seemingly at the upper echelons and then other times at the bottom and everywhere in between to my name i have um i've got a gold disc i've got a yeah uk gold disc a platinum disc as well different things for what i've had uh, for my involvement as a session musician and uh, that's been for the last 20 years like i say and all these sort of things that i've seen over the years have ultimately created my opinion here and what i can lead you to believe with you know what you're looking for from being a an independent musical artist, if you like, okay? So expectations, very important that you're, you know, aware of what you're looking for. If it is for world domination and you want to be, you know, going right up there, etc., you need to be doing something that's very, very, very commercial indeed, and you need to have the whole package, okay? So that's probably something, I mean, I would think you would... It's not for everybody, to be honest. A lot of people just want to get their music out there. But if you really want to be a pop star, per se, you know, it's one of them things that I can't really help you with because that's aiming very, very high indeed. If it's to get out there and to go on to the next rung and to get your music heard, then this is more what we're talking about and this is more what you can expect from this. So, looking here now. Yeah, I would say as well, expectations, luck. Luck's a big thing in the music industry because I've known many, many people and seen many people in my studio who've had all the talent in the world and have not had any luck with it. And that is a big thing as well. Having the ability and being the best, if you like, you would like to think you're the best often, but there's often one better. But having all the ability in the world doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to hit big with whatever material that you release. It's just unfortunate. It's a cruel world we live in and the music world and not everybody that's pipped for stardom, etc. makes it there. But anyway, so talking about expectations, yep. Now, next up here, we have... I need to get my special noise on because it's really important. There we go.
motivation yeah yeah motivation if you're wanting to be involved in the music industry in any way then yeah you need to have bags of it that can't be uh you can't ram that home enough because everything i've ever done is you know i've had to go out and get you know no one's ever gonna hand anything to you on a plate when it comes to getting your material out there or getting your music career going or whatever it is everything in the music industry is really driven by very motivated people now i've got a theory that in the music industry as ai and robots and all that sort of stuff take over every other manual industry driving you know deliveries etc i think more and more people are going to start to pile into the artistic industry you know and it's going to get busier and busier again and a more saturated market the problem is is that no one's really waiting for your material you need to really go out there and put it right in the face and motivations everything it takes a lot of tenacity to be in the music industry you're always getting doors slammed in your face it seems you know and I think for anything that goes well, you could probably have a number of things that didn't go so well, but you just need to pick yourself up and get on with it. You need to be very thick skinned and you're going to, like I say, you could do a, a demo, send it out to about a thousand different people and then you end up, you know, getting maybe two responses that say uh, it's not for us, but keep sending your music. You know, things like that do happen, but sometimes you strike gold. It's like the shotgun approach, I call it. If you try and fire at everything, as, you know, there's many places that are relevant, which we're going to talk about, uh, to your career, then the idea is that you keep firing and firing until you eventually hit something, until you zone in, until someone shows an interest. And talking about interest, we have on the chat over here, Knox556, yep, hello again, mate, yeah, and yeah, uh, have you heard about the new AI music that is coming out? It's crazy. Yeah, that worries me slightly, the whole idea of AI music, because... If uh, robots can do art as well, then what is there left for humans to do? In some sort of dystopian future movie plot, you would think that would be the case. You know, we all get wiped out exactly like uh, Terminator. Yes, it's a little scary. Certainly is. But I would hate to think that people could be that predictable that, you know, AI would be able to just zone in and make the most basic music to appeal to, to absolutely everybody. Surely they just left that to... Um, well, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't diss anyone here. So anyway, yeah, so motivation, like I say, the motivation is everything about getting your stuff together because it's the one class I did not get at college. And I think, to be honest, if I had a motivation class in college, then there'd probably be more of those people who I was studying music with who actually would be in the music industry because that is one of the number one things. Okay, so moving on, what do we have next? There we go. Yep, the product. Okay, now the product is absolutely everything. Okay, and I think, you know, before you even start making the product, you need to be thinking about what your market is. Because, like I say, this is for people, if you're serious about getting your music out there, and by the way, if you've just tuned in, we are doing a wee Q&A, an info session about getting your music out there, certainly from the way I have done it in the past to varying degrees of success, sometimes very successful, sometimes not so successful. Anyway, so the product, yeah, I would say you really need to know where you're aiming your music at. A lot of people find it difficult to define their own style of music, um, and I, th I think it's a kind of youthful um naivety that you can't define your own music because it's all got to have come from somewhere even if it's really far out you know there'll be some kind of influence from different styles so you need to be put into a box this is the problem with everything i find in the music industry you have to be put in a box you have to be put in a genre it's like the human brain has to think in a, in boxes you know you have to say right okay is that is that a disco track is it a house track is it, is it a punk track is it blah blah you know if there's the crossover type stuff can confuse people quite a lot and i think the more the music industry goes on uh, the more specific it is it's more of a fast food industry you know, people want something that will sell quick. They know that it's going to fly off the shelves. It's like if you had a shop, why would you have things hanging up that weren't selling, you know? Uh, to make a quick buck, you want to make sure that ultimately your product is going to sell as a company. 
you know. So if you are putting your yeah, material to a company, and that's what you're thinking of, before you even record it, you should be thinking of exactly, you know, what company you're going to go to, how, you know, look at whatever record company it is that your favourite artists are on, have a look at the acts on there. I'm not saying you need to be thinking of being the next Ed Sheeran, a lot of those large record companies are totally closed off. They'll find you, they say, you know, on their websites. They don't have A&R men or anything like that, you know. But if you aim your sights a bit lower and you actually see whoever it is that's behind your favourite acts, be it a local act, be it a, you know, a kind of national act or whatever, and then from there, see who's involved, see what other acts are on that label, if you're sending this to a label, that is, and, you know, and try and kind of keep in line with that style. And that's particularly true of dance music. You know, you wouldn't go and send like a, a, a really thumping techno track to say, say something like a, a kind of more, you know, a housey kind of balearic type, you know, label, vice versa. You wouldn't send a drum and bass track to, to a house label or vice versa. You know, they, these things are obvious, but when you take that right down as well, you need to be really careful that your style does indeed fit in because a lot of times people won't take an interest and you'll be marked as that band that, you know, wasn't ideal for the label. If you have some name that they recognise, you know, you can send your stuff again. And I do believe a lot of the time people don't look, you know, twice at an act. So ultimately, if you're thinking of putting your product to a record company, yeah, then get involved and really get to know the style of the company that you are working for or you're hoping to work for, I should say. Now, just checking here, yeah. Immerse yourself in your chosen market, yeah. That's something important as well. If you are trying to put together material, aiming for a particular um, branch of the music industry, say it was an indie band or a, an indie dance band, for instance, you know, immerse yourself in your chosen market. Even if you're in a, a metal band or if you're in a jazz band, you need to really get in about the community that you're going to be ultimately trying to involve yourself with. And I would say getting along to gigs is important, speaking to people there and ultimately seeing what the word on the street is. Very important, immersing yourself in your chosen market, you know, both musically and I would say culturally. Okay, so yeah creating an interest yeah the world isn't waiting for your release that's something as well yeah you need to really create a, create the you need to manufacture this interest and that's something we're going to talk about in a wee minute in Everything I'm telling you as well, although it is, it is an informed opinion because I've been working as a music industry professional for the last 20 years, it is still an opinion and a lot of people will give you opinions in the music industry as well. What I would, the advice I would give on those opinions is the people who are actively in the music industry and have done so in the last couple of years are the ones that are probably best worth listening to. I mean, a lot of people give you good advice, maybe if it was a proper performance advice or something like that. I mean, these sort of things, these sort of tips will never die out, but a lot of people claim to know the industry. Even people who worked in the industry five years ago I've spoken to and have told me one thing, which is often, you know, not the case now. And I've worked with people, some publishers I've been signed to, and they've said to me, oh, it's not the industry it was, you know, a, a year ago. So it's constantly evolving. And one way of keeping up to that and keeping up to date with with that I would say is to always keep involved in those circles and those scenes online you should be involving yourself you know with uh, groups online for instance like a forums that deal with your specific type of music that's one way as well to just see what's happening that's what I'm saying about immersing yourself in that whole kind of environment so the product yeah do the product to the best of your ability as far as songwriting goes if you're putting a few tracks on an EP do you think EPs are a good way to go? Because we're not really living in that album world anymore where it's all just people um, making, you know, albums to be listened to. People put an album online and really, and anyone in Spotify and Apple Music, they just go through and listen to their favourite song a lot of the time, I find. So an EP is often a good way just to get stuff out there. And you should really have a number of tracks, I would say, to choose from. Because if you just pin all your hopes on your release on maybe two or three tracks... You, and the only th two or three tracks you've ever written, you probably find your next track to be better. In fact, every next track's going to be better. Every time you write a track, it's going to be better than the last one. Yeah. So, um, and that's something that Count Basie, an old jazz artist, said when he was interviewed. He said, what's your favourite song? And he says, uh, the next one. And that's very true because the next song you are going to write will always be better. You know, if you're writing a song and you didn't think it was as good or um, it was worse than the last one, 
often I wouldn't bother every new song gets me enthused and I get right involved in it and then it's known when to stop and say right okay I've got enough tracks here we can put that out and I would say if you're putting out say three or four tracks you should probably have about I mean minimum of about, about twice the number of you're putting out you know that's a good place to start and choose tracks from especially if you're a band for instance you know and it depends how long it takes you to get songs off the ground some musical compositions if they're like really densely layered cleverly uh, orchestrated dance compositions they will ultimately take a lot longer to do and maybe it's not as easy as playing a song in a band and just rattling out in one night but yeah having a material to choose from is very important okay so if you guys have just tuned in then it's, this, by the way, is Hot Knife's House, and we are talking about how to get your music out there into the big bad world and hopefully give yourself the best chances of success. What's happening over here on the chat? Yo! Say hello! There we go. Anyway, yeah, so the product now. Next up, try to make sure I get this very important program sound here. Yep, there we go. Right, who's in the chair? How cinematic is that, eh? Getting it online. Now, it's the number one question I'm asked here at my studio in HQ Glasgow. How do I get my stuff online? How do I get it out there? Now, before we really get it out there, as in getting out to contacts and people of interest, we need to physically get the product online. Okay, so, I'm just going to go through a wee screen here. Yeah, now here's something very important indeed. Now, this is really for the UK. Now, I would say getting your stuff online what are you looking to do with it is it for um getting that for instance is it for is it to go to a record company are you thinking of putting it out through a record company um or are you specifically thinking about putting it online yourself okay because both of them uh, have different implications if you are looking to get your stuff to a record company we'll talk about that in a minute but at the moment yeah, we are talking about physically getting your material online yourself. Okay, so we'll deal with that first and then we'll talk about how you do it with a record company. Okay, so over here, I'm going through all my screens now. Du -du 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 -du. Getting it online. Yeah, now physically you need to get your material uh, online. Now, if you're putting it out yourself, one of the things that you need to do is you need to register your music now this basically just means that you ultimately get your any money paid for your material if it gets played online or if it was used for whatever purpose then you would have this uh, these two organizations and this is specific to the uk but every country will have their own version of this this is the PPL and PRS. Now this is for, like I say for the UK at the moment but these two organizations are the ones who ultimately pay you money. And it says here, PRS for music and PPL are separate organisations who license different sets of rights in the use of music. PPL licenses the use of recorded music were played in public broadcast on radio or TV or used on the internet on behalf of record companies and performers. Okay, now the big thing here is what is the difference between the two? There we go. Yeah, PPL collects and distributes money on behalf of performers and record companies for the use of the recorded music. Yeah, and PRS for music collects and distributes money on behalf of songwriters, composers and music publishers for the use of their musical compositions and lyrics. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so basically, right, the PPL, what they do is they give you something called an ISRC code. Now, this is very important if you're to upload your material to any um, any kind of online sites, things like Spotify, iTunes, etc. We'll get to that in a wee moment, how you need to do that. But first, what you need to do, once you've recorded your material and to prep it for going out there, if you are putting out yourself, like I say, you need to get these codes. Now, the PPL... PPL is a company that, I'll just try and find the, the website for us here. 
Yeah, the PPL UK. There we go. PPL is a company that um, gives you what you call an ISRC code. Now, an ISRC code is something that uh, tracks the 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 song anytime it's been played on radio or anything like that it's a code that's embedded in the track that ultimately gets you paid okay and makes you money on the physical recording okay and the, this PRS the Performing Rights Society you need to go to them for what you call a CAE number that's just a where you log the actual track itself, okay? And uh, once again, it's, it's what pays the songwriters. PPL is the one that pays the people that have played on the track, okay? And PRS is the one that pays the songwriters, in short. So, yeah, you need to get in PRS, get CAE numbers. You go on the PRS website, Performing Rights Society, and they will basically uh, take you from there. It's, it's quite self-explanatory. A wee bit daunting at first, but it gets easier. And the PPL, same site, like I say as well, they, they will ultimately get you an ISRC code. So ISRC code, CAE codes. You need those codes before you go and upload any music. Okay. Now, like I say, if you are uploading music online, now I'm just going to go to a site for you here. Yeah, this is a site I like to use called Emu Bands. Okay, Emu Bands, there we go. Stop in the corner, and the site I'm going to copy in here, emu band, www.emubands.com. Now, they are a kind of uh, digital broker site, if you like. It's, there are lots of different ones. I've heard people using CD Baby and other sites, but this is the one that I use that ultimately gets everything on Spotify, Apple Music, um, Deezer, all these sort of different sites, that is the one to, to use. That's what, that's the quickest way, certainly, of getting your stuff online. Uh, using that. And there's a one-off fee that you pay them as well, which is a lot better than a subscription service. A lot of people offer subscription services, but I think a one-off fee is much easier. And they're very easy to deal with as well. They will always have uh, your material up within a few days. And if you need to take it down, they can take it down in a few days as well. So there you go. So that is if you are putting your stuff online. Like I say, there are other sites that will do a similar thing. But this one for me has been the best one to deal with. I believe they're also a Glasgow-based company as well. So there you go. So... Yep. Now we're still talking about the product. Now, if you're looking to get your stuff out to a record company, yeah, this is something different as well. Now, record company, it's, I would say it's like catching the crest of a wave when you send out material because uh, I think you really need to be knowing who you're sending well you obviously need to know who you're sending it to if for instance you're sending dance music and the dance music is one i've certainly at the forefront of at the moment something that i've been um working on i should say it's been at the forefront of my work i am not at the forefront of dance music that would be quite well that, that'd be nice if it was but no anyway yeah so if you're looking to get your you know your material heard but the right label in the dance music world then you would really need to make sure that your material was something that was fitting with that record company and that's that does apply to any label to be honest but yeah dance music world there's a lot of different kinds of dance music and one of the reasons i am involved more in dance music i have done it i've done a lot of stuff in rock music a lot of metal like i say reggae done a lot of stuff in pop um to varying degrees of success and um, I find dance music to be one of the places where they're still looking for, you know, demos to get sent to them. A lot of labels still say, send your demo here, which is a good sign. You know, it, it shows the industry's still happening. <coughs> like I say, if you try to go onto Sony's website and get an A&R contact, forget it. And the closest you'll get to that from these sort of people is... We'll contact you if we want you, you know, not the other way around. I've noticed that in a couple of the the, 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 the main kind of, you know, uh, multinational companies. But to get one of those deals as well, yeah, that's it's a pipe dream for a lot of people. And, it's, you know, it's, it, there are less and less big deals around. This is the thing I say about record companies. It's The problem is, I think it became so bloated in the, the 80s and, and, and it's certainly the 90s record sales that... Uh, you know, the only way it could go was for something like, you know, piracy and MP3s to come in. Because I've got a CD 
from the mid 90s from Erasure Pop Greatest Hits. I love Erasure, but um, Erasure Pop Greatest Hits. And I bought that in the mid 90s and it's got a, a sticker on it for £16.99, which is a wild, wild price. I mean, CDs were selling for about eight quid until recently, were <laughs> more or less no one buys them, eh? But that was a huge, huge. I don't know how they could possibly have justified that, but I mean, they did confess the record company they were just making up prices, you know. So I think, you know, something like digital technology comes on. I don't think folks were quick enough to jump on the bandwagon. They're all trying to laterally, but yeah. And I think, you know, that kind of scuppered the record industry. The Beatles in 1966 started, uh, or they said to Brian Epstein, the manager, you know, we're, we're not going to play live anymore. And that was like, what are you absolutely crazy guys? You know, and right enough it was because that's how bands made money. Records weren't thought of as as big a deal. And they went into the studio and they revolutionised the recording industry. And I think that you could actually just be a studio musician all the way up until, say, you know, early 2000s because that's really, that was the golden era for rec for the recording industry. And since then, it's been getting smaller and smaller. But there is still opportunities. There are still people out there looking for demos as well. But like I say, if you, if you set your sights too high, this is the expectation thing again, if you set your sights way too high, then you're going to end up getting disappointed because you need to be realistic with these things as well. Like I say, start small there. Don't need to start small, but yeah. Keep yourself, you know, being reasonable and who you can send your stuff to. And if you send stuff, you may as well try and send your stuff to a major label. But at the same time, uh, don't be disheartened if you don't get a response because the response rate is never great with these things. But if you are putting it through a record company, well, a record company will ultimately take care, you would think, of the marketing for you, would take care, you know, of getting it online, all that sort of thing, because that's ultimately what they're getting involved to do. They are getting involved to take care of the business side. Um... Great to have a record deal, not for everybody though as well. I would look at record companies more as a kind of way of breaking down barriers for you and ultimately getting your, uh, getting more contacts for you than you could probably amass yourself. That's really something that I would use a record company for, you know. If it's just to get your stuff online for the sake of having it online, you know, just do that then. Go to a company like Emu Bands and just put your stuff up there because, yeah, it'll be online and it'll be exactly what you're looking for like i say it's up to yourself so i'm just reaching over here because i've actually got a little script in front of me i can actually talk for great britain as you can tell i could pretty much just go on without even taking a breath but yeah just making sure i'm covering this all because there's a lot of important things here yeah yeah I would say if you're sending anything out to a record company, then make sure it's finished as well. You know, it's worth spending that bit more time on it. Don't ever send anything out that's not been 100% uh, mastered. Don't send anything out with excuses saying, oh, you know, I was, uh, was going to get this one produced better if you guys like it. That's a bad move as well. All the record companies get flooded with material as well, so you need to make your entry to the record company as a... Uh, yeah, as, as pain-free as possible. Sending an album and saying, listen to track one and track ten, and if you like it, you listen to the rest. No, don't do that. And don't ever send, I would say, copies attached to emails. Always send a downloadable link. If you go on SoundCloud, you can actually, uh, um, you can change the permissions, as you call it and that makes the track downloadable, and a downloadable private link is ideal. Record companies as well, they don't want you to be sending out your material to loads of different labels. So if you are addressing a letter to a record company, I would say it's good to maybe go in with a, a point on how you like the material on their album. You know, if you have uh, if you know some acts that have, have worked on that label, etc. You know, things like that. It's good to start to show that you've actually paid attention to who you're talking to, and it's not just a dear sir uh, letter dear sir letters never look good in business even get a template letter you know with your biog in it you know initially a wee bit about the company say hey guys you know everyone likes to have their ego flattened or flat flattened no they don't no ego flattered okay you know so if you're going in there say it's nice to maybe research 
who the a and r man is as well that is dealt with the act that you like that's also another big point okay a lot of record companies you know small labels will have just the one a and r person but sometimes slightly bigger labels maybe have a couple and if you go in and you know give them the idea that you've taken the time to research a wee bit about them that always goes down well as well so if you get an email together something with maybe like um yeah hi there whatever it is records getting it online records yeah and just leave that little bit blank there have the rest of the email and then another bit about the record company and even just i would say just put in the the record company's name you know each time and making it seem personalized that's another kind of cheap way of doing it giving you all my my, my tricks now but yeah basically looking like you've taken the time to research the company is important don't send material out to a company who's nothing like your style okay if you're a country if you're a country artist you wouldn't send out a uh, track to a techno label unless you were i don't know doing some sort of cotton eye joe remix or something terrible like that <laughs> but anyway yeah so getting online like i say if you do it through a company, they will do it for you. But you need to be really what a company's looking for because as their industry gets smaller, these things become a lot more targeted as to what they need. And it's, like I say, often catching the crest of a wave. You need to be hip and in that kind of a style at that moment if you really want to achieve, you know, major success, I would say. If you want to have a big single then and you want to go a big label with it, then, you, you know, you need to be producing something that's right up there. And it needs to look right as well. Don't forget this ever. People hear with their eyes, okay? So if you're putting your material up, you know, uh, yeah, you need to have a, some sort of image, something that makes you interesting. A promoter once told me, he said, you know, you either need to be good looking in the industry or really ugly. And that's very true, yeah. There's some of the people you see that are super ugly, you know, just as big stars, and it's, it's because they look interesting, I think, you know, and if the more interesting you are nowadays, that gives you the edge. I think, you know, people at Lady Gaga and all these sort of acts, you know, taking the kind of, uh, you know, seemingly taking the world by storm, etc. It's just because they seem interesting. I think that's a big part of it as well. If you can celebrate your uniqueness as a person in some way, have that in your image to show that you are, you know, ultimately something that fits in, but also you have some sort of flair, you know, and that's very important. And that's all important with getting your stuff online okay so image but we'll talk about that in another another episode and it's not for me anyway i've got pink here for god's sake you know right what else do we have oh, here we go getting online and oh, 10 seconds to go until my loud explosive noise comes in very very cinematic and very important this here we go Market, yes, indeed, marketing. Now, this is something that, yeah, once again, if you are on a label, you know, this is something that you would, um, you would really be getting done for you. It would certainly get a lot of input into how you would do it because it's something that they know best about. Okay, but if you're looking to just get your material online yourself, how do you market it? Okay, and I'm talking about if you're marketing it as an independent artist, how else do you get your material out there? How do you get in touch with people? How do you make those contacts, the all-important contacts? Yeah, well, yeah, social media, something that really can't be overlooked. Um, I think, you know, I mean, everyone seems to keep telling me the market leader really is Instagram, and that's once again something that revolves mostly around image so we come back to that you really need to have something that looks interesting in a photo yeah there's no no way to get away from that okay yeah your music can sound great etc but and i think it needs to look great as well you need to have something that really gives you a bit of flair something that makes you interesting yeah so that's once again Instagram because it's all more or less photos. You can only get a minute's worth of material on Instagram. If you've got maybe little videos and things or you've edited little clips down of uh, say uh, sort of music videos, then yeah, that's gonna be something that's gonna be handy because Instagram, everything's a minute long on Instagram, you notice that? And I've got this theory that basically people can only handle about a minute's worth of uh, 
online entertainment if they're you know scrolling through their phones or whatever so i think the shorter the better if you can really do something that draws people in maybe a little clip of a song something about the chorus etc just something that packs a lot of entertainment into a minute's worth of video then that's really i think that's a real strong way to start and obviously sponsoring posts and things like that people always uh, you know, if they're serious about music, sponsor their posts on things like Facebook, Instagram and elsewhere because you can target your marketing. This is all important. You can specify the age group, you know, what people have, you know, said they like when they come on Facebook. They maybe filled out a form saying, you know, I like house music, I like this, I like doing that, you know, and then you can actually uh, choose your demographic to market to. It's one of the most powerful tools to use in self-promotion is targeted marketing, things for, let's say, on Instagram, on Facebook. But um, I, I mentioned something there about video. Now, video is not something I didn't uh, talk about. Now, with the actual product that you're putting out there, I think it's ludicrous not to consider getting as much video footage as you can out there because people are interested. Everyone's, you know, live streaming now, like I am myself. And, um, yeah, we're living in a very visual world, okay? Everyone wants to know everything about you. And uh, if you're not seeming to have all sorts of footage online, you're not anybody, it seems, nowadays, okay? So the more footage you can get, I mean, the actual proper video is good to have. Maybe a, a two or three videos, I would say, for your EP. It'll give your songs the best chance you can, especially if you make something interesting, like I say, something that draws people in to your music. Anyway, so yeah, get my little list here. Marketing, yeah. Marketing's... I mean, it's important in everything, isn't it? I mean, how how do you how do you sell a product? It's the same. How do you sell yourself? And musicians aren't always the best, you know, at selling themselves. Often you get your kind of really humble types, like you know, uh, who's that? So I'm I'm just looking over here, on my side. I'm at Hooters and can't hear you, so I'll just be lurking, lock, lol, Stupak X. What an interesting fellow. <laughs> You're right, Hooters, mate. Maybe you should be the one doing the live streaming, eh? <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Marketing, yeah. I mean, getting as much footage on your social media, very important. But, looking there. Yeah. Now, creating an interest... The world isn't waiting for your release, yeah. We are in a saturated market in the music industry, you know, every man and their dog seems to have some sort of musical project on the go, and every single person um, on these, I would say, on, you know, you know, share your music sites, I look at these things all the time, you know. Everyone on there is ultimately just trying to get himself out there. Yeah. Okay, so this ultimately backs on us getting it out there that's what we're talking about today obviously getting your material on facebook things that are you know anything that can i would say any kind of media you want to be getting yourself involved in yeah anything that's relevant to your line of work on facebook you get a musician page you know there's things that you know sites like reverb nation i know that as well they maybe use you know you can uh, sell your music on there you can uh, stream your music you can put your band gig dates up things like that any of these sites you need to be looking at i think you need to be on as many platforms as you can get on because it's the shotgun approach the thing i keep going back to if you keep putting your stuff out. You basically try and hit as many different folks as you can, and then hopefully someone will take an interest. And what we got over here on chat? <laughs> if only Twitch had subtitles. Yeah, indeed. Stupak, I like that. Stupak. <laughs> I'll just be lurking. And that's one of them uh, Twitch phrases. Can someone actually clean up for me what lurking means? I keep hearing people talking about lurking. It's a, uh, is it as seedy as it really sounds? Yeah. Okay, guys. 
So if you have tuned in, this is Hot Knife's House, and tonight, as opposed to the reverse engineering of some musical compositions of mine, I am going to be talking about how to get music out there. And this is information that I'm consistently getting asked for in my studio, the HQ Glasgow. And no, it looks kind of like I'm at my parents' house here or something. <laughs> Just because in order to have all my mixing desk and everything in the shot, I have to physically move my setup from one one side of the room to the other, and tonight I just thought, oh, nah, I'll set up some guitars here, you know, make it look kind of cool as if I'm, uh, yeah, rocking out, I've got my pioneers in the background there, yeah, anyway, <clears throat> I think I might invest in one of them new webcams, just to really take this to the next level, maybe get a green screen involved too, yeah, here's something important, see when you first play your tracks to anyone, if you want a real honest opinion of your music and from your peers as well uh, I always tell bands that come in the studio to put their tracks on in the background just while they're around their friend's house or something like that and um, yeah and see what the reaction is it may well be that they'll turn around and go what is that shit, turn that off in which case you've got to be, got to be prepared for that but also, if people start tapping their foot, nodding their head, then yeah, that's a good sign. And that's the litmus test for, get, I would say, for really seeing whether people like it. Because if you go and tell someone, oh, this is my music, have a listen, they're always going to say they like it. Oh, that's great, well done, mate, you know. Think how many people congratulate people on things that they shouldn't. Best man speeches, get that all the time. Oh, great speech, mate. I'm thinking that was a terrible speech. But we all say it, don't we, you know. Anyway, over at the chat here, what do we have? Lurking is when someone just watches, never says anything. Lurking around. Yeah, indeed, yeah. I think that's interesting, yeah. Just watching. A voyeur, I would call that. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just getting on my wee list here of stuff that we have not covered because there is a few. Yeah. Like I say, blaze the trail or follow the trail blazed by others. Yeah. If you want to get your stuff uh, out there, then look at bands who've already done that or look at acts who've done that previously. Investigate a wee bit about how they got their stuff out there in the first place, who their management is, yeah, who, who the record company is that works with them, you know, where they've played, and set your sights on, you know, like I say, you can set your sights on a national level, still quite high up there. If you set your sights at a local level, that's a good place to start because all these things, you know, build upon each other, all these contacts, people getting signed, you know, off the street and suddenly becoming the biggest act that the world's ever seen. Yeah, it's not it's not real life and it's you know, the music industry is not the industry that your uncle talks about, you know, and would give you advice and say, Yo, you need to go out there and get a record deal and you know, and uh, meet an A and R man and Yeah, all these things are not the way they used to be. And that's year on year, they're changing. Okay, so I would say if you're looking to get your stuff out there on your own, yeah, like I say, the Facebook, the social media aspect we're talking about, also press, okay, who is the music press in your area? Who's the music reviewers? And this is all easy stuff to find. All you need to do is go on Google and look it up. I mean, if I go on Google at the moment and see what we've got here. Da -da -da -da. Google's your friend, your best friend when it comes to all these things. The amount of questions I get asked by people that really could have just looked up Google. Now I've got this quite massive, so let me just take the size of this down first. There we go. Yes, perfect. Okay then. So, local music press. Let's just out of interest, let's see what comes up. Okay, yeah. I mean, these are ones that are relative to Glasgow and where I live, which obviously is important for me. Just make that bigger and you can see there. Yep, I don't know if you can see that because I've probably got that old screen in the way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, you're always getting... A, even like people also ask, it gives you other questions. You know, how do I write a press release for music? How do I get music? All this sort of stuff, how do I promote my music? Things that we're talking about, there it is in Google. And what are they saying? Okay, create your music website with Wix Music. Now, I've got a sneaking suspicion this might be something to do with Wix. Oh, yes, it is. There you go. But, yes, yeah, still a couple of things in here that are saying promote your shows on Bands in Town and Songkick. Bands in Town, Songkick, these, again, are sites that are kind of like Reverb Nation that we have here in the UK or MySpace. Do you remember MySpace? I do. Maybe I'm just that old. But, yeah, all these sort of sites 
get your own YouTube channel. Yeah, that's an obvious one. Host your own music on Apple Music, iTunes. That's what we talk about. Getting out there with emu bands, Last FM. Yeah, that Last FM. <laughs> this is quite old. This is from. 2015 it says here because last fm is no longer actually in existence but anyway yeah but just to illustrate a point if you go on there and look on the well you can pretty much find everything you're looking for contacts wise as far as getting your stuff out there okay so glasgow music you know look up glasgow music if you're in glasgow if you're in wherever you are look up the name of your city and then music information music industry etc all these sort of things will ultimately give you links now i would say if you're doing stuff originally as well you want to get your stuff out to music bloggers bloggers are some seem to be quite a holding a bit of influence and if you get local music press sometimes they have their own kind of bloggers and people that come out and re review your tracks that's a good place to start okay and you'll always find them as well yeah, anyone that's reviewing records and things like that, especially if it's people that you know quite well and will be sympathetic to your stuff, all these things look good. The more you can collate the whole package, if you ever were to send to a record company, can you, you can develop your act first, okay? Getting your stuff online, doing all those things that I said, and obviously, you know, then gathering your case if you like so then you can go to a company if you choose to do so and you can say you know how you've worked no one's going to take an interest in you if you're not interested in you people seem to think that getting your music out there it's like uh, you contact someone at a Willy Wonka type golden ticket affair and then you get everything you need and that's your life taking it no 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 nothing ever works like that especially now you really really need to work your ass off at it and there's, there's no substitute for that. that's why I say motivation when you're doing things okay so yeah now how long should I spend on a project this is something that I've often thought to myself how long do you spend really plugging something because anything I've ever done I've worked really hard at it a lot of bands stuff I mean for instance my last band bags of rock <laughs> this is funny because at the moment I'm doing a kind of you know disco house project bags of rock like a heavy metal band but with bagpipes now, why would I do something like that? Well, I'm Scottish, obviously. I've been around pipe bands all my life, but no, I just like the idea of doing something weird and wacky and something that, something that was just kind of a bit out there. And there was a wee bit of a trend for things like that in Scotland and in Germany in particular. And um, we nearly got signed to... Um, we nearly got signed uh, to a subsidiary of Universal called Napalm Records in Austria and they basically said we were going to sign us and we're like great excellent fantastic we gave them the album it took ages I made the album a studio here the HQ Glasgow and at the 11th hour they pulled the plug on it and we were pretty devastated we're like what happened here how did why is no one actually you know it, why did this not happen we were absolutely raging you know it was uh, something ultimately the band kind of broke up after, not long after as well it was that's that's the flip side when these things fall through at the 11th hour as well but yeah getting the stuff out and that, that that was something that had only happened after we'd been pushing and pushing and pushing for about five or six years and i think that's a bit long if you're really wanting to kind of gain success with a project i think maybe spend about two or three years on it and then, you know, if things are really picking up, you can judge it then. But if you're talking about getting something out, as in released professionally, something you want to kind of get as successful with as you can, if you're very ambitious about it, then yeah, I would say about three years in, if nothing's really happening, then it's probably better than moving on to something else, you know, because pinning all your hopes on one thing can be dangerous in the industry because one thing might not be what people are wanting at that moment in time. But yeah, so I'm just checking back over in the chat here. Yeah, Knox is saying, yeah, lurking us, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I read that out already. Anyway, so yeah, like I say, Getting your music out there, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's straightforward if you're motivated to get your stuff out there, okay? If you're not getting your stuff out there, um, to let other people hear it, if it's just purely for a, a wee bit of fun, then yeah, do whatever you want to do. But I think for seriously getting your stuff out there, the points I was making was, just to go over them quickly, just to recap before we finish off tonight, yep expectations yeah manage your expectations first just make sure that what you're doing yeah is realistic okay it's great to dream and whatnot but 
yeah, you need to keep within what is possible, okay? Otherwise, you can be prone to disappointment. You don't want to be disappointed. You just want to go on to the next level now. Okay, motivation. Keep going on about it. Nothing happens without it. Make sure that you are getting yourself in as many different places as possible, getting seen by as many different people, consistently sending out material to people, making sure that everybody knows who you are, whether it be on forums online, whether it be people getting review of your stuff, all that th sort of thing comes down to motivation. Okay, right, the product itself, yes. If you're aiming your product for a particular market, make sure it suits the market because too many people are let down when they don't uh, properly consider the market. And that's what happened with, with Bags of Rock, my band. I say it was the problem with the, the product. Although it was a great product, the, the a &R eventually said, we just don't know how to market it. And that's because it was a wee bit too left field, okay? And starting off the product, I thought people would get would get interested in it as opposed to, you know, having to kind of create an interest in it and having to... I thought I could basically um, cut a new path with some of the things. And not just that, but some other kind of dance project things I've done as well that have been a bit far out there. I think I could be the market leader, but it's much easier to fit in with a market and then after that you can spread your wings, okay? So yeah, product, all about your know thinking about actually who you're aiming your product to okay getting it online that's again P PRS getting your CAE number okay getting your ISRC code from PPL these are the people who pay you and will ultimately log your song and have an official record of it as well uh, I've made some money off of PRS and PPL plays as well so it's worth it you know this is money that you could be making if your tracks are getting played on the radio and a lot of times live as well okay marketing that's again what we're saying about getting things on relevant social media okay and immersing yourself in the market like i was saying you know making sure that you are out there and getting in about you know whatever scene it is that you are involved in now yeah and that is getting it out there so thank you very much for tuning in guys now we're going to be on next week and we're going to be once again uh, oh hang on. wait a minute stop the press we have some chat here is there a place we can hear <laughs> Is there a place we can hear that metal pipe music? Just curious to hear it. Yeah, aye. I'm mostly on talking about hot knife, so I kind of I digress slightly there. But yeah, um, look up. There we go, bags of rock. <laughs> but anyway, most importantly, what you need to look up at the bottom of this screen, as it says, hot knife's house. Because on there you will find a list of all this, uh, everything related to Hot Knife, my Spotify account, the YouTube, the Mixcloud, we're doing mixes. Some of these shows have been archived, I'm going to get the other ones up on YouTube as well, guys. Okay, SU10 sample guy. Yes, no problem at all, my man. Anyway, yeah, but like I say, check out Hot Knife's house. And um, yeah, I'll be back next Friday, 8 o'clock. Oh, wait a wee minute here. We've got some more chat here. Yep, so Echo 12 Music, I personally find new uh, I personally find new music on YouTube, SoundCloud, Bandcamp and Spotify where I can actually listen to music. I never, big capital letters, uh, never go to a social network. So why are more people saying Instagram is a place where people are going to find new music? I don't buy it. Is that just Facebook owns Instagram and has all the sophisticated data, uh, all the sophisticated data and analytics and ad targeting platform and they just want us to buy ads? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I think, you know, part of the problem is you can't hold back the tide and all these sort of social media things are taking over. It's something that... If you can't beat them, join them, I think. And they've got such a wide um, a wide platform that you can ultimately advertise yourself on. It is something that I would say is ultimately worth it. Facebook and Instagram, you know, I one minute of music isn't ideal. I'm not a fan of it either. But what I try to do is kind of park what I think and try to think outside the box, as in what the customers are looking for. And that is the... <laughs> 
very shitty world we live in when it comes to music. Think about everything that's happened with, like, you know, MP3s as well. People, in many cases, are happy to listen to much lower quality files, or they were for a while when MP3s were a lot lesser quality. People are happier to listen to that out of convenience than they were to actually listen to sound quality. Obviously, you get your audio file types, like myself, that would always like the real deal. But still, yeah, no, an interesting question. And just before I go, if anyone else wants to post a question, feel free to do so. Like I say, we're just about to sign out. But like I say, next week, Friday, 8 p.m., I am going to be on every single Friday here talking about music and obviously music production in particular. We're going to be deconstructing and reconstructing some more of my compositions next week. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Echo 12 Music, that was keen of you. Uh, thank you very much. Now, okay, I'm going to look up here and see who you should go and talk to. Is there anyone doing music production? Who can we raid? Let's have a look. Song requests. I'm always interested when these people are on singing live. <laughs> right, yeah. There we go. Oh. <laughs> right, yes, indeed. I think I have found someone to direct you to. Any more questions just before we go? Guys, please feel free to ask away. I'm just going to say bye on the chat here. Bye. Kiss. And let me just direct you over here to another raid. Hameta. <clears throat> Check her out. Yep. I'll just send you over here. There we go. There we go. Thanks very much, guys. Okay, then. So check out, like I say, Twitch TV, twitch.tv, ham meta. H A M M E T A. And I will see you soon. Okay, then. Thank you very much, guys. Next week. Cheers now.